Your organization rep represents a number of members, and I'm really interested to hear how things are going for them and what, what you're hearing during these COVID times. They are finding ways to adapt and thrive during this time. These guys were you know, really, you know, they pulled up the bootstraps and, and went to work making sure they could survive this and hopefully see starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel here. audio video editing space and i guarantee you there's two things that they will tell you uh, are some of the most awkward things that you could experience as an audio slash video person number one editing yourself i do it on a weekly basis uh you know recording podcasts recording interviews and having to go back and um, listen to your own voice there is nothing more cringy than sitting at a computer and trying to edit out your ums and oohs and yes and all that sort of stuff and but but we do it it's uh you know, it's part of the gig and how we get a podcast published every week. And um, it's fun at, at the end of the day. But, you know, that's that's number one. Number two is, especially as an interviewer, is having the mic flipped on you. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, we, we do a lot, um, you know, as, as a host of a podcast to, to prep questions and um, think about how we want to uh, craft an episode, how we want things to go. But, you know, it, it's weird being put in that position of being on the other side of the mic and having the questions thrown at you and, uh, it, it's a it's a different kind of challenge, a different way to approach an episode. But that's you know what I was faced with as uh, you know I was for I think the first time you know I've done a lot of podcast episodes in my life. I can't imagine remember the last time I was actually interviewed for a podcast. This, so this might have been my first podcast interview from the other side of the mic, and got to do it with Chris Schriever, the publisher of Sleep Retailer, uh, who we recently had on the Independent Thinking podcast, and. Uh, you know, you, yeah, I guess I did so well. Uh, you could say that that Chris decided he wanted to turn the mic around and have me on their episode, on their podcast, and uh, we did that with a recent episode. Talked about a lot of great stuff. You know what what we're seeing here at Nationwide with our members, and uh, you know what what's happening in the independent retail space, and um, a lot of topics. You know, obviously COVID uh, and and the impact that's had on businesses was a big topic that we discussed, and and a whole bunch more. And you know, honestly, it was fun. It's different. It's very different as opposed to, you know, being able to, to ask questions. So, uh, no, but it was a good time and um, happy enough enough that they shared the episode with us. So you can go listen to the Sleep Retailer podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and you can find it there, episode 31 of the Sleep Retailer podcast with me uh, as their guest. But, um, you know, they were cool enough to share that audio, and, and we're happy to do a little crossover here, uh, you know, with their podcast. And, uh, put a little wrap on it and, and run it, you know, as you would hear it over there. So big thanks to Chris and his team and uh, everyone at Sleep Retailer for, for their help getting this set up. So let's go ahead and uh, for, uh, you know, a, an awkward transition, I guess. We're used to just diving right into an episode, right? But we're actually diving into someone else's episode. So uh, here we've got the Sleep Retailer podcast featuring uh, yours truly on uh, as a guest. So here you are. you're listening to the sleep retailer podcast good morning i'm chris schriever i'm your host of the sleep retailer podcast thrilled to have rob stott with us here today rob is the communications manager for nationwide marketing group and we are thrilled to hear his perspective and really just to kind of dive in with what's happening right now it's such a, a strange time uh rob good morning morning chris appreciate you uh having me on and uh you know uh, it's fun we had the mic pointed towards you uh, a couple of weeks ago so i think i did well enough to have it turned around on me is that what we're going with <laughs> I, I like it well let's let's see how you do rob <laughs> same, same. your organization rep represents a number of members and i'm really interested to hear how things are going for them and what what you're hearing during these covid times yeah, like you said, nationwide, we represent over 5,000 independent retailers with some like 14,000 storefronts that all, you know, they, they go across multiple industries. So appliances, consumer electronics, furniture, bedding, outdoor uh, and connected services. But yeah, I mean, this COVID time has been, you know, certainly quite the upheaval on normal day to day business for retailers. But the inspiring thing, I think, is that they are finding ways to adapt and thrive during this time, given I, we're we're kind of past, I think, in most states at this point, the the complete lockdown orders and starting to see business get back to some sense of normalcy with 
different measures in place and social distancing and that sort of thing. But I think adaptability kind of is the way you could boil it down to just what our members have done, what this industry has done of independent retailers across the country and just inspiring to watch, you know, watch them fight for their business. It's not like corporate big box stores, you know, where, you know, they've got hundreds of locations all throughout the country and we're able to stay open for the most part. These guys were, you know, really, you know, they pulled up the bootstraps and, and went to work making sure they could survive this and hopefully see starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's a very important distinction. We're talking about a number of independent retailers who are relying mostly on one location to survive. Um, that one physical location, many of these companies also, of course, have an online presence that, you know, helps sustain uh, sales and grow their company. But these are primarily individual retailers. Is that correct, Rob? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of one store location. We have, of course, members that have multiple locations. But yeah, you mentioned, I'm uh, glad you brought up the, the e-commerce side of things. There's always been this push, I think, from the nationwide side to, to help members get online, get up and running and not even just have a website in general, but have a website that is e-commerce ready where consumers yeah. can come in and make purchases. That's been a you know, an effort we've been trying to make to, to get members up on those kinds of websites and certainly saw the, the willingness for them to adapt and start supporting those systems for their businesses. And I mean, they became a critical lifeline during this time. You can't really put it any other way because when customers can't come into your store, the only way to make sales then is unless you're doing it over the phone is through a website. You know, it's interesting. Do you happen to have any, you know, research soft, perhaps that you could speak to on the number of retailers that that you that you jumped in and, and helped advise them on how to get an e-commerce site started at, you know, perhaps the beginning of this? Yeah, specific numbers, hard to get into, but certainly, you know, we saw an influx of members wanting to get up and running on websites and those that already had it, you know, obviously making the investment as well to improve their websites um, mm -hmm. and whether that was either just starting a website in general or adding services like digital chat, you know, video chat, text to chat services and, and things like that. You know, we certainly saw exponential growth in those areas for sure. Um, so definitely, you know, excited to see members that were willing uh, and able to make those kinds of investments to ensure that they were able to stay in business in some way. You know, I, I'm, I'm interested um, to hear what insights you might have on consumers. They're obviously starting to return uh, to stores. Any idea of what they're, what they're looking for as they do make their return to stores? Yeah, answer there is everything. <laughs> I mean, they are they're really looking for everything. And when you're talking about the categories that we serve at, at Nationwide and our members, you know, they sell. So appliances, furniture, bedding, consumer electronics, you know, they, they've been looking for it all. You know, and just to, to circle back real quick to the website points, you want to talk about where they're going. So, yeah, they're returning to stores, but they're also shopping more online. We, I mean, traffic to our member stores has more than doubled during the, the course of the pandemic. Wow. It, was already, it was already on sort of that upward tick of traffic increasing year over year. But, you know, we, we kind of see this as uh, just the whole pandemic, uh, you know, the way it's kind of forced retailers forward. We've been kind of joking internally that, that we're kind of living in this retail future right now. Uh, because the way things were going from a, a digital perspective, they've kind of just been uh, the fast forward button's been hit you know, and we're kind of seeing that play out in real time, which is it's neat to, to watch that happen. But, you know, online traffic's up, uh, like you mentioned, in-store traffic starting to, to climb. And and I mean, the products they're looking for I, doesn't necessarily pertain to the, the sleep side of things, but we know that appliances yeah. have been way up. It's impossible to for our members to keep those in stock right now. Freezers in particular, you know. Early on, the demand for, for those were, was high because people looking to store food, but certainly that, that has continued. More specifically to the furniture and bedding side, as people have been home, you know, sleeping on these mattresses, I think, you know, they, they kind of, you know, sit on their couches more often. Maybe they're doing some work from, from the bed or the couch. They're, they're starting to realize how, you know, old or outdated or lumpy that, that couch or bed has become. So demand in those categories has has been up as well. And, you know, sell through as well. The numbers we've been tracking, they're all up in almost every category across the board for nationwide members. Sell through to, uh, to consumers is up. Interesting, you know, that we talk about how the retail environment has been pushed forward, right? I think consumers have also been pushed forward in, in that they're more comfortable now, not just doing the research online, but actually completing that purchase. 
online and without even physically touching a product, be it a freezer or a bed or, you know, th that, that trend had certainly started before all of this, but it, COVID has certainly pushed it forward, I think, dramatically. Yeah, we actually not long ago caught a, a study that had come out. Adobe Analytics is uh, known for, you know, tracking sales online, especially during yeah. the, the Black Friday season. They, they've got their regular reports that come out. They had a report, you want to talk about online traffic increasing. The months of uh, March, April, May, or April, May, June, the, the height of the lockdowns surpassed Black Friday holiday shopping season in terms of average sales online per month. So think about that for a second. I mean, wow. Black, Black Friday is always kind of when new records are set online um, in yeah. terms of online sales and things like that. And I think that if I remember right, the averages were like $70 billion in online sales during Black Friday 2019. And in April, May, and June, online sales surpassed 70 billion. So, I mean, they were, they were up close to 80 billion a month during the lockdown. So it's not a holiday time, but people were still willing to spend online. And, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see whether that continues and that's kind of what, you know, we're keeping an eye on now is, is whether that, you know, that level of e-commerce sell through sustains or we kind of see sort of a normalization, you know, as we gear up here for, you know, looking at the, the calendar, almost Q4 already. So, you know, that's that's a very good point. And it, it, it's interesting because then with with all of that in mind, how has COVID changed or evolved perhaps the purpose of your organization? I mean... At the end of the day, the, the heart of our mission is to serve our members, uh, you know, to, to give them the tools they need to survive and thrive and, you know, succeed in their business. And we're always going to be a member driven organization. So in that sense, we haven't changed. So we're, we're still here for them, you know, producing the tools they need and giving them access to, to services and the, the vendor opportunities to be successful in their day to day. But watching what we've been able to do internally, you know, talking about the nationwide team and um, all the different departments and, and, you know, everything that we have going on internally, it's, I, I think nothing short of inspiring to kind of watch how we've all been able to come together, much like the retailers that we serve, you know, and develop different tools, whether, you know, it was a back to business hub, we've got uh, shop safe promise programs that, that have been developed and all, you know, under, under the, uh, the purpose of, supplying our members with the, the whether it's personal protective equipment things like that or you know mm -hmm. just some best practices to follow around this return to uh, normal retailing with the coronavirus still out there I, I think it's just strengthened our commitment to wanting to serve our members and, and make sure that they can be successful no matter what it is that they're facing whether it's competition from big box stores the influx in online competition or a i guess a global pandemic <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that's that's a very adequate summary, right? I mean, you're, you're there for retailers today and tomorrow, regardless of what might be thrown our way. And that's that's pretty outstanding and a great resource for the retailer. Yeah, we certainly try. You know, it's certainly, a, I think, a two way street. You know, it's getting constant feedback from them about, you know, what are the tools that they need and making sure that we are you know, providing the, the right level of uh you know, resources to them or, or what it is that they need. It's a, it's a constant back and forth and, and learning and growing together. Absolutely. And that's what we all are doing at the moment. Well, Rob, as always, it's it's great to connect with you. I think that, you know, one of the values I see with, with doing so is the number of, of retailers that you represent and you provide a perspective that is uh, very well informed. And um, to that end, I, I would imagine that there may be a retailer or two that, that has done something particularly interesting throughout this time that you might want to share a little bit about if, if you can. Yeah, of course. I mean, you nailed it. We have a, a ton of members who are doing a lot of things. And, you know, I mentioned the, the work I've been inspired by the nationwide team. I've been probably more so inspired by some of the stories we've seen come out of the membership. And uh, in this space in particular, I, I know you guys probably are aware of Mattress Mac and Gallery Furniture yeah. down there in Houston seeing things that they're doing, providing free resources for, for back, getting back to work in, in their area. I know he also did free food distribution, um, offering, I think, even men like mental health services and stuff. So cool to see stuff like that. I, there's other members. Shuey's Great Buys, a member in the Indiana area, right around Indianapolis. I mean, at the 
the outset, I, there was some laundry issues at a local EMS center. I think they donated a couple of sets of laundry appliances. And then even like, you know, another Texas member, you know, leather furniture company, they're in up in North Texas, you know, had a situation where, you know, they, they were closed as a store, but managed to take their resources. They, they produce furniture as well as sell furniture. So they took some of their supplies and ended up started, they started cranking out face masks and uh, other other gear like that. So, you know, those are just a couple of examples, but lots of stories like that of members finding ways to to turn around what they do and serve their communities. And that's what makes working in, in this space so awesome and um, you know, something that I love getting up to do every day. That's, uh, you know, it, it has been interesting to us as well to see how quickly a number of manufacturers have been able to to pivot and to really help. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I'd be interested in, in your thoughts too, turning the, the mic around on you in the middle of your podcast, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> SSB, the mattress that they came out with, I, I don't know if you guys had seen that. They, they're working with a, a Swiss company where they, they have like an antiviral mattress. So you, you mentioned, you know, manufacturers doing stuff. It's cool to see them developing an actual mattress that can cleanse itself of uh, viral bacteria and perfect timing to promote something like that, right? In the middle yeah. of a pandemic. Absolutely. So. Great timing. And, <laughs> and you know, it, to, it, as well, it would be interesting to see how many products come out of this time that are oh, yeah. um, healthier in nature, or, you know, maybe they're originally designed for the hospital setting and right. are being um, spec to be used um, at the consumer level. Rob, it is always great to connect with you. Thank you so much for taking some of your time, uh, some time this morning uh, to do so. We are, we are grateful. Yeah, appreciate the opportunity and look forward to having you back on our show. We're ready. You just let us know. <laughs> You've been listening to the Sleep Retailer Podcast. Join us again next time for another great conversation about the latest betting industry news, innovations, and trends. All right. And, uh, you know, again, a huge thank you to Chris for, first of all, for deciding he wanted to actually, you know, thought I was intelligent enough to have on their podcast and talk about, uh, you know, some of the things we're seeing in independent retail and, um, you know, felt like he could pick my brain a little bit. So I, I appreciate that and uh, more power to him for, for pulling the info he did out of me. So great interviewer. And, uh, you know, again, appreciate them also sharing the audio and allowing us to share their episode. So again, be sure to go check out the Sleep Retailer podcast on Apple and Spotify. And as always, we appreciate you listening to the Independent Thinking Podcast, and we will catch you next time.